I was pretty much raised in a small little fishing village in Greece. My uncles were fishermen. I always, you know, woke up like 3 o'clock in the morning so I'd go fishing with them. Loved being on boats. I knew I loved the ocean. Always knew I wanted to be somehow career-wise on a boat. Then we moved to New York City. I used to see the coast guard going up and down the Hudson River. I wanted to go out and you know do search and rescue and save lives. Day one, the officer in charge said that he didn't feel that females should be in the coast guard. I was like, let me just be the highest working best person at the station. A lot of people at the station went like talk to me. But one of my shipmates like told me, you know what Chief is saying to you, you know this horrible person that they're making you out to be. So I kind of trusted him. He called me one day, he's like, Oh, you wanna go for a hike? Didn't have a second thought of, you know, why I shouldn't go hiking with him. We reached like a little pond and he was like, I'm going to go for a swim. You know, I'm like, I don't have my swimsuit, so I'm not going to go in. It's cold, too. He got out of the water and came. So I was like on the ground sitting down. And then he came like standing up and his penis was like literally like in front of my face. He's like, oh, you know what to do with so I was like, um, no. So I got up. And he pushed me back down, and he, that's when he raped me, and he, um, I was like, I kind of froze, like I couldn't even, like, it's like I felt like I couldn't even walk, like that's how I felt, like I, my legs weren't even there, and... I went to the executive petty officer's office, who was the second in command. He's like, get out, just get out. I don't want to talk to you about this. Then they finally told me, okay, go back to the chief's office. So I went back upstairs to see the chief and my rapist was there. And, and then the chief said, hmm, you're both liars. You're both lying. Whatever issues you're having, just Go work them out and don't bring your childish behaviors here. Um, so he ordered us to go up to the attic and clean it out as a way of working out differences. So here we were in this isolated area from the station. And he's like, well, no one's going to believe you anyways. My friend in Boston, who was stationed in Boston, he physically went to the office and was like, this is happening, Burlington, like, please call this girl. Like, she needs help. Next thing you know, I would call him the chief's office because he got a phone call from Boston. And he's like, well, this could ruin our careers. You need to get a performance evaluation. We're not even sure you should even stay in the Coast Guard. You're not working hard enough. So they sent me up to Station South Portland, Maine. Chief in South Portland, Maine. He followed all protocols. He's like, we'll send you down to Boston. We have legals there, we have medicals there. You're gonna get all your support. We have a victim advocate who already knows you're coming. It's gonna, you're gonna get help and it's gonna be okay. Um, so they drove me down to Boston. I sat down with the investigator and told them what happened. And he was kind of taking notes, but he wasn't really taking notes. And I'm like, well, can you write this down? Like, I was telling him, like, what to write down. He's like, oh, yeah, I already wrote this down. Um, I have read my investigation file. And every time I tell him, make sure you write that in there, he didn't. I was assigned a victim advocate. And that lieutenant, she was constantly blaming me for what was happening. She's like, well, why, why did you go hiking with him? Oh, what were you wearing? I mean, this was my victim advocate. 
Um, so I was sent back to the station with a recommendation to get med boarded out for adjustment disorder. I got a phone call. They were like, oh, your DD-214 came, my discharge paper came in. They were like, we chose not to med board you. And it was an admin discharge. If I was med boarded out for a medical condition, then the Coast Guard would have to compensate me um, and give me like a monthly disability payment. By choosing to admin discharge me, the Coast Guard doesn't have to pay me out. In the morning, I went and signed my discharge papers. On my DA-214, it was like, honorable discharge, but the reason they put down was unacceptable behavior. And I didn't want to have unacceptable behavior on my DA-214 because I haven't done any unacceptable behavior. And they came back and changed it to miscellaneous and other. The day I received my recommendation to get a med board, I went online Googling like Coast Guard rape, Googling like military, like not much were coming up. And then I just started blogging about it. Pretty much almost overnight, I was just getting all these emails, a lot of active duty members telling me what was happening to them, which was almost identical to what was happening to me. You know, they reported it. They were met with disbelief. They were told that they were at fault. Military Rape Crisis Center basically just started me to offering mutual support. And people who I helped in the beginning just wanting to give back. You don't have to be by yourself. You have help. You have people on your side. 